Hey everybody, welcome back to another Urban Aviary video. I got a good one for you today. Today we're going to look at the differences between adult quail and quail chicks. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the different color patterns so that you can look at them and see uh, when they're chicks what they're going to look like when they're adults. So if you end up getting a mixed uh, run of different colors from somebody or hatching eggs from somebody that are mixed run um, in the color, you'll be able to identify what they're going to look like when they get older. So I've got the chicks in one container, the adults in the other. I'll give you guys a look at the, the chicks first and then we'll do a kind of a comparison with each one of what they're going to look like as adults. Okay guys, so here's our chicks. There's six different types I'm going to show you. This first one is the ferro or brown or jumbo brown they call them. Um, they got the the black patterning um, throughout and then the kind of the goldish yellowish color to them. Um, and that's very similar to the pattern of the, the next one I'll show you which is the Italian. But this one and the Italian are the only two that you're going to be able to identify male from female at about you know, three to four weeks old uh, by their feather color. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, what the adult version looks like. So this is what he's going to look like when he's an adult. Now this one's a rooster. You can tell by the orange breast. He has no speckling whatsoever. Um, that's how you can tell he's a rooster. When we get to this Italian next, I'll show you what the hens look like and uh, it'll be the same on, on these, on the pharaohs. So that's that's what he's going to look like. Might freak out here a little bit. They don't like being hovered over. But this is this is the kind of color pattern you're going to see with them. Is this, you know, different colors and shades of brown and a little bit of tan in there. This next one is our Italian. Um, you can see that it's got these same black markings on it that the pharaoh does, but the background on it is all white. And that's what will turn out is, is all white, and then on those black markings will turn into some other different uh, black markings as it becomes an adult. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. This is what that one's going to look like when it reaches maturity. You notice the black speckles, the lack of the rust color and all those speckles on the chest. Let's see if she'll let me get a better shot of her. That is how you identify a hen with the pharaohs and the Italians. There will be the, that speckling. And she has lost some feathers on her back here so it's kind of hard to see the markings and pattern on her back but just that upper part of her back you can tell that's what it'll be like all the way through uh, through down to the tail. And this little guy right here that doesn't want to cooperate with me is called the English White. Some people call them the Texas A&M's. I've talked about in another video how that's kind of a misnomer. Um, but, that, I mean, it, the, the nomenclature doesn't really matter. Uh, Texas A&M or English White. They are just they look totally yellow like this when they're chicks. And I'll show you what the adult looks like here in a second, but they're just totally, completely white. So this is the best example I can find for you guys right now of the English White. Um, the adult I have is a little dirtier so you don't get to see how, how truly white the feathers are and he's actually got some pharaoh in him, he's got some of these stray brown feathers in him and the one on top of his head um, he obviously doesn't want to cooperate here either but that's what they're going to look like when they get to be adults, he's only about four weeks old right now and we'll get some more size on him but that's kind of give you an idea of the bright whiteness they are and it'll be just that solid white all the way through, it's not going to have any of those brown feathers on it and then just real quick, this is that adult He's not as bright white as that younger one is just because he's kind of dirty right now but that's that's more the size they'll be and that's what they'll look like. Alright guys I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can this one on the left is a tuxedo which is a combination of a Tibetan and an English white and this one right here in front is what the Tibetan should look like except for this one has got some pharaoh in it but the identifying marks are those yellow marks on the head above the eye those are, those are how you tell a Tibetan is they got those yellow marks above their eyes, but the body, even though it looks, you know, a lot like a Tibetan, it's um, got a lot of the the coloring from the pharaoh in it. It's got some pharaoh in it. So that black, that darker black, on this guy's back, this will focus here. That is gonna, it's gonna look more like that on that thing's entire body, but it'll have those yellow ear marks. This is how you identify a Tibetan, and then this pharaoh is when, what you get when sometimes you mix a English white with a Tibetan. And it doesn't always end up like that, sometimes the color patterns mix, but it's nice when you get that, that tuxedo look. It's pretty fun. This is that typical Tibetan tuxedo. Um, he's actually kind of a dirty tuxedo, he's not perfectly white through the belly. A good tuxedo, a nice looking one will be solid white all the way through the front, not have the modeling like it does there. 
and then it'll just be on the back have the typical tuxedo look but this one I kind of liked his face the way he's got that streak of, of dark feather right there on his cheek but that's something what your tuxedos will look like in all sorts of different variations uh, when they get to be adults so this guy doesn't want to cooperate with me setting him down he just wants to run off and not sit still for the camera but this is just a straight Tibetan he's got the black all the way through under my hand it's the same See if I can move that a little bit, but that's what the breast pattern kind of looks like. This is the feathers at the back of her, uh, the back of her neck, so it's kind of hard to see that color back there, but that's kind of what the color pattern will look like through the back on, on a straight Tibetan. Okay, and the lighting's not the best for this, but this is a silver tuxedo, and he's going to have a lot of the lighter color through his back. Um, he has a, got the white belly, like I said, he's a tuxedo, so he's got the white through his belly, but I'm trying to show you that color on the back. He's kind of a, a grayish color, and that'll be a lot more prominent when he when he gets older. Um, but then he'll obviously you know, have that super white belly. So I want to show you what what those look like in some of the different silver color patterns. And this is one of those silvers. They come in a lot of different shades, all the way from dark gray to a, a, a bright silver or platinum. This is a lighter color and kind of one of those brighter colors. But they'll come in dark grays and like I said, all sorts of other different shades. Kind of got the lighting here to where it looks decent enough where I think you can tell the the silver color to that or, or gray. Um, but they'll look something like that or any any shade or variation of that from a dark gray all the way to a, a light silver. So those are some of the basic colors I have. I hope that gives you a good idea of what the they look like as chicks and as adults. I've got some more coming. Um, those eggs that I ordered from David over at Kansas City Quail Farm or in the incubator. Once they hatch, I should be getting some more different varieties and colors that I haven't had yet. So maybe we'll do another one of these videos once I get some of these other colors, hopefully getting some gold manchurians, some cinnamons, and hopefully cross our fingers for, for some of those, those fun colors. But I'm going to get these guys back out to some water access. If you couldn't tell, they were panting pretty good. They're normally outside, and I brought them inside of the garage so that I could shoot this video and have some decent lighting. But they're ready to get back out there and get some water. So I'm going to get them out there, and we'll see you guys on the next video. And until that next one, remember, you guys can do this too.